This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Ravel Germany's Tornado, Tacom's KV5, Trumpeter's HMS Monmouth, Airfix's Bristol Blenheim, and a bunch of Edward details. Hi and welcome to another edition of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Aaron Skinner. First up, a little mea culpa. In my excitement to write about Zvezda's A320 in the last MPRD, I had Tim say, sorry Tim, that the kit included Pratt & Whitney engines. Bad Aaron. The kit actually includes CFM and IEE engines as used on the A319, 20, and 21. The Pratt & Whitney's are only used on the 18s. Right. I've spent the last three weeks hitting myself over the head with Jane's All the World's Aircraft 2011 and 2012, the hardback, as punishment. It hasn't been enough. On the upside, we did discover that Zvezda's kit of the Airbus runs less uh, at the retail price than what we had originally reported. It's $29.99. Moving on, let's take a look at Ravel Germany's all-new 148 scale Panavia Tornado. This thing pretty much looks like a delivery truck. You're not wrong, Tim. It uh, was a, designed by a consortium of Italian, German, and British companies. The Tornado is a multi-role combat aircraft. It is. This kit is the IDS variant of the twin engine swing wing aircraft. IDS is fancy speak for interdictor strike or ground attack. This thing is gorgeous, packed with terrific moldings and lots of neat features and options. Now, we just said that this was, it looked like a delivery truck. Yes, the aircraft sort of has a delivery. So what you're saying, what you're saying is the kit is gorgeous. Yes, okay. this thing. I pointed at this thing. The greenish gray plastic exhibits some of the finest panel line engraving we've seen. It's also accompanied by petite rivets. Outstanding work, Ravel. Construction starts with the cockpit. Doesn't it always? Sure, which includes very pretty ejection seats with molded harnesses, control sticks, and a tub with molded knobs, switches, and instruments. Decals embellish the detail on the tub and instrument panels. There's complete intake trunking to engine fans. The wings interlock so they can swing, and bars rotate the wing pylons to keep the stores aligned. There's the provision to show the flaps and slats down, the spoilers extended, and the speed brakes open. Optional parts allow for the thrust reversers to be shown open. The box contains a bunch of stuff to sling under the plane, but all are marked as inappropriate for the kit's single decal option. That unused ordinance includes BOZ-101 and Sky Shadow countermeasures pods, AIM-9L sidewinders, and other targeting pods. The clear parts are outstanding and incorporate the detonation cord for the ejection system. There are some beautifully printed decals for a single but very colorful Luftwaffe anniversary scheme. Wow, this is a terrific looking kit of a popular plane. Do you think we'll see other versions? It's a good bet. Here's hoping for an RAF GR1 so I can use some of the racy nose art decals from the Gulf War I've got stashed away. What he said. Next up, we have Tacom's 135th scale KV-5. Aaron, Mr. Soviet Armor. Yes, sir. What is this thing? Well, actually, the KV-5 never existed except on some Soviet drawing board. I guess with the popularity of paper panzers, it was only a matter of time. Before we saw similar creations from the Red Army yeah. drawing boards? Yeah. Exactly. The uh, Soviets, known for some really groundbreaking tank designs like the T-34 and IS, were always looking for the next big thing, literally. The T-28 and the T-35, they were mammoth multi-turreted tanks. They saw limited use during World War II. The KV-5 was designed uh, to build on the successful KV series, with a longer hull and a 170, 107 excuse me, millimeter gun and a tall turret. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get in trouble like you did with that Zvezda kit earlier. No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm one mea culpa a year is enough for me. <laughs> anyway, Tacom has produced a simple kit of this big tank. Most of the hull is comprised of a single slide molded part incorporating the sides, glasses, and upper deck. No interior means the work focuses on the exterior. There's a lot of suspension. Early perforated KV road wheels attached to arms that are keyed for alignment. Individual link tracks wrap around the running gear so you can easily represent the upper run sag seen on KVs. Stowage bins attached to full length fenders. There's photo etched metal for the engine intakes. The turret has separate hatches and periscope covers. The machine gun turrets on the hull and turret are designed to turn. A turned metal barrel is supplied and the gun's elevation is controlled by polycaps. Given the tank's non-existence, any markings are going to be spurious. 
The kit supplies decals and color instructions for a Soviet KV-5 at Kursk, complete with slogan, red star, and turret number. The other option is a captured tank and finished service wearing three color camo and hakristi. Real or not, this is going to make a heck of a display. You could use it with your Warhammer game. It would look the part. Our third kit today comes from Trumpeter. It's the 1 350th scale British Type 23 frigate. In this case, the HMS Monmouth, the sixth ship in the Duke class. I, for one, appreciate the sleek lines of these modern warships. You would. You know, if you like wooden sails, Tim, that's your business. Huh? I own it, man. I own it. Originally conceived of as an anti-submarine warship, the Type 23, its design evolved over time to be more of a general warfighting uh, ship, especially because of the Royal Navy's experiences in the Falklands War. Armament includes Harpoon anti-ship and Seawolf anti-aircraft missiles, as well as a 4.5-inch gun. Now, this isn't Trumpeter's first Type 23 frigate, but there are a few updates and changes in this kit that are going to make for some happy modelers. Starting with the Merlin HM-1 helicopter and the so-called Crichton turret. The kit is on par with Trumpeter's recent naval subjects. Great use of modern molding, especially the one-piece hull. This is a full hull kit with no provision to build at waterline. There's a one-piece deck and nicely done superstructure sections. Fine items like the harpoon launchers, davits, screws, and antennas look very good. Photo etched metal supplies really fine stuff like crow's nests, ladders, and masts. There are no railings or flight deck safety nets. Detail molded under overhangs is neat, and there's even detail on the walls and the ceiling of the hangar, so you can pose it open. Optional parts allow for the Merlin to be posed ready for flight or with the rotors and tail folded for stowage. Decals provide hull numbers, ship's names, and black crown and flight deck markings, as well as flags and ensigns. This looks like it could be a lot of fun to build. The inclusion of uh, photo etched metal railings would make it dead brilliant. Whatever. Now, if we were talking about this 1667 66 gun ship of the line, that's something I could get excited about. Moving back to the air, we have Airfix's new 172nd scale Bristol Blenheim. Now, I'm sure we all remember specific kits because they were important in the evolution of our skills. For me, Airfix's original Blenheim is one of those kits. The 1968 release is festooned with rivets and raised panel lines. Based on advice from modeling manuals and magazines, I decided I would sand all that off and scribe new panel lines for the first time ever. I was 14 years old and pretty proud of my efforts. I wonder whatever happened. Yeah, is there a point to all of this sentimentality? Uh, it's that I have a soft spot for the Blenheim. Do you want to actually tell them about this kit? Sure, right after you tell them about the Blenheim. Okay, great. Designed in the mid-1930s, the Blenheim uh, was outclassed by Axis fighters. Now, it was used as a fighter, a night fighter, and a reconnaissance aircraft in Europe, Africa, and Malaya. Airfix's new Blenheim is the Mark I bomber with the short nose and single machine guns in the wing and turret. The panel lines are extremely fine, but crisp. There's plenty of detail inside. The cockpit has seats for the pilot and navigator bombardier. There are controls and panels, but no harnesses. A pilot is included, but no gunner or navigator. Other features include a bomb bay with ordnance, racks, and optional doors to pose it open. There is a detailed turret, wheel wells, landing gear, and engines. Optional parts provide open or closed cowl flaps. All of the control surfaces, including the flaps, are separate and the tires are shown weighted. Unused parts point to the upcoming Mark IV. Clear parts are very nice with sharp frames. Cartograph decals provide markings for two Blenheims, one Romanian reconnaissance bird. The other is a Royal Air Force aircraft flown by Victoria Cross recipient Arthur Scarf in Malaya on December 9, 1941. Scarf was killed after carrying out a solo attack against the Japanese beachhead at Singora in Siam. Badly injured, he got the aircraft back into British territory where he crash landed it, saving his crew. Scarf died a couple of hours later from his wounds. All in all, a, another terrific kit from Airfix. Are you planning on Reliving the past? More like putting it to rest. I'm sure this one's going to be a lot easier to build than that other one was. Finally, let's take a look at some beautiful detail sets from Edward. First up, a neat set of remove before flight tags in 172nd scale. The red strips are legibly printed on fabric and should look the part. Thin photo etched metal hooks are included. The remaining sets are part of Edward's brass in line. 
First, a pair of 148 scale AGM-65 Maverick missiles. The castings include the missile with separate tail, launch rail, optional seekers for the B and E versions, and a clear cover for the head. Decals round out the package. Sticking with aircraft ordnance, this time in 132nd scale, we have a pair of 500 pound bombs. Resin provides the bombs and fins, while photo etched metal is used for the nose and tail fuses. Decals provide the characteristic yellow stripes and stencils. Moving to 135th scale, we have a pair of machine guns. There's an M2 Browning 50 caliber. And an MG34, Germany's main machine gun at the beginning of World War II. Both sets feature finely cast resin guns. Photo etched metal handles, sights, and controls dress up the weapons, which should look great on armored vehicles. Well, that wraps it up for this episode of New Product Rundown. Look for reviews of the Tornado and the Blenheim in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more of these and other new products in the September issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting finescale.com. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I think I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. See ya. What? I was Are checking you, you, my script. You've got a sentence, man. <laughs> a sentence. <laughs> Look for reviews of the Tornor. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making up a new language?